Hi guys, it's Rosa here. I hope you're all having a really lovely day. Um, I'm here today to do a video all about making my wedding dress. So for those of you who are new to my channel, hello, <laughs> thanks for watching. I got married at the end of August on the 26th, bank holiday weekend. We had a really, really wonderful day and I knew from the moment I got engaged, which was exactly a year before we got married, that I wanted to make my own wedding dress. There are loads of reasons that I decided I wanted to make my dress. The main one is that I really just feel more like myself whenever I wear something that I've made myself. I'm very much um, dedicated at this point to my handmade wardrobe and most things that I wear on a daily basis I've made myself. So for example, this is my um, Soho 7 toaster sweater. I'm wearing it with a new look patterns mini skirt. I'll leave links to the patterns down below if you wanna check them out. Um, but I wear, I wear clothes that I've made myself pretty much every day. So I just knew that I really wanted to put the time and the effort into making my wedding dress as well. I can completely understand why loads of people who love sewing their own everyday clothes choose to not make their wedding dress because it is a real commitment and I'll come on to this later and how I kind of coped with that and how I felt a little bit stressed at times, a little bit apprehensive, maybe anxious about it. Um, but overall it was a really positive experience for me and I really enjoyed it. So I just wanted to just share my experience with you, hopefully uh, give you guys some tips if you're also thinking of making your wedding dress or a, a dress, a special dress for a special day in your life or a special event. Um, so the first thing I did, number one, <laughs> is planning. I think planning is just the key and the most important thing for me was doing as much research as possible. So I read blog posts of people who'd made their wedding dresses and got their top tips. I did spent loads of time reading magazines. I loved the Rock and Roll Bride magazine. I'll, I'll leave a link to it down below. It's just the coolest magazine and it's all about um, women and men doing weddings their own way and not worrying too much about um, what other people think and just doing their own thing. And it's, it's a really inspiring read if you've not had a look at it. So I started by reading lots of magazines going on Pinterest, ripping things out, making collages. And I'm also a real sketcher. I absolutely love sketching. So I sketched a million and one ideas out. And until I, I, I to, be honest, to begin with, I really thought I wanted to go for something quite casual. So my Pinterest board was looking like lots of jumpsuits, lots of short dresses. And I was like, well, I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go casual. But I thought before I make a commitment and buy the fabric, I'll just go and try on some dresses. So I went um, with my maid of honor, Zin, and we went and tried on a load of dresses. They weren't all wedding dresses. I didn't go to a bridal boutique because I felt like, I don't know, I felt like I shouldn't be in a bridal boutique somehow because I wasn't gonna buy one. I didn't wanna like, I don't know, I felt funny. So I just went to places like Monsoon and I went to the Bentall Center in Kingston. So just big department stores where you can try on a lot of evening wear because as in my life as a primary school teacher, I rarely wear formal wear. So I'm just not used to seeing myself in it. But as soon as I did, I was like, oh wow, I want a huge skirt. <laughs> it's like all that, those ideas of just looking kind of cool and laid back. I was like, no, 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 I want a train. <laughs> I want a big skirt. So that went out the window. But then I really, really got into looking at some dresses with fuller skirts and I decided I wanted to go floral. So I started researching floral fabrics. I got some swatches. I brought a beautiful silk, which I'll put a picture in here, um, in here, a beautiful silk with embroidered flowers on the Goldhawk Road. I actually bought it at a meetup on the Goldhawk Road, which was organized by Alex and Jen. And it was, it's, it was so beautiful. But as soon as I made the trial bodice, I just wasn't convinced. <laughs> I really wasn't sold on it. So once I decided I wanted a floral dress, I pinned lots of pictures. I was looking for fabrics. I tried out that silk. I wasn't convinced. Um, and I ended up uh, loving this particular brand of dresses. I can't remember the name, but I'll, I'll leave a link to it down below and I'll put some pictures in here of my inspiration dresses. And I just thought that's what I want to look like. And I found a picture of one of their dresses in Rock and Roll Bride magazine as well. And I was just completely sold. I just was in love with it. So once I decided I wanted a much bigger, flashier dress with a train, I started looking at sewing patterns and I didn't find my perfect bodice. Um, but I did find my perfect skirt and I'll insert a picture of the pattern I used here for the skirt. It's a McCall's pattern and it's just beautiful. It uses a lot of fabric. You have to use fabric that's 150 centimeters wide, which is enormous. And you also need to um, cut it on a single layer because the pattern pieces are so wide. So it's not gathered around the waist. It's cut in seven different pieces and they are huge. They start really narrow at the waist because 
there's seven of them so they're all quite narrow but they just go out and out and out and they are huge so i knew i'd have to buy a lot of fabric and i couldn't choose a fabric that was very expensive for this reason um so i decided to go for a cotton fabric and i actually got it from sew me sunshine from harriet who i love to support her because she's just so inspiring she's got an amazing business and yeah she's just awesome a lovely person and it was brilliant to be able to buy my wedding dress fabric from her and she was amazing so i bought nine and a half meters so i knew this skirt pattern was going to use absolutely masses um, and she delivered it by hand to me. Luckily she lives just down the road, so that's not too bad. Um, but yeah, it was really, really kind of her. So she delivered it by hand and we had a coffee, which was awesome. Um, so I had my fabric, I had my skirt pattern. I did not have my bodice pattern. So I decided to start twirling, uh, which is like your, you know, your trial run. And I decided to just make my twirl using my lining fabric. I bought my lining fabric. It's just a plain white, um cotton lawn i bought that from fabric land i had to have some element of fabric land in my dress didn't i because you guys know i love fabric land so i decided to cut out the skirt from the lining fabric and i decided to try out a bodice which was my favorite bodice which was new look 6123 and you can see it here and i tweaked the fit and did that sort of stuff um, on the lining and then I went right ahead and cut the skirt out of the real fabric and the bodice but once I made the bodice and the real fabric I just wasn't loving it so I actually made two other bodices <laughs> which I'll put pictures in here one was the one that actually came with the skirt which I loved but it had these like weird shoulder things that were inserted into the princess seams and when you lifted your arms the whole thing just distorted and looked ridiculous so that all went out and I also tried a pattern which I drafted myself um, last summer and I just wasn't loving that and I ended up actually going full circle back to the first bodice I tried which was the new look 6123 but I decided to just scoop it out a little bit so make it a little bit more revealing a little bit less boxy and then I was just absolutely sold I decided as well instead of just doing the lining and the exterior fabric I decided to mount all of my fabric um, before I use it. So I bought double the quantity of my lining. I think I bought about 16 meters of the lining fabric, but it was dirt cheap, so that was actually fine. Um, and all of my uh, flowery pieces, my pretty pieces, I mounted, so I just cut an identical piece in the white and treated them as one. And this is just because I didn't want any transparency at all in my wedding dress for obvious reasons. <laughs> and also it just makes it a little bit sturdier because when you're working with a cotton lawn, it is quite a, a, a sort of floaty fabric. And with a bodice like the one I went for, which has had this wrap style, you really want it to have some structure. So I mounted all of those and the skirt, I also did two layers um, as well as the uh, so I did the lining layer, the mount, the mounting layer, although I didn't actually mount the skirt, I just made another skirt and then the outside of the skirt with the flowers on. And there's something about a train with flowers on that I was just, I felt like a princess. It was just, and I never thought I'd want to do that, but I just felt almost like a fairy princess, you know, like my long flowery train going behind me. It was really nice. Um, we were just overwhelmed by how amazing and generous everybody was in the run up to our weddings. I mean, we had our amazing wedding cake made by Josh's sister, which was just, yeah, gorgeous and delicious. And we had the flowers done by my friend Maria. We had the photography done by two of our friends and it was just it was just the best day because so many people contributed to it and my friend maria who did the flowers also very kindly gave me her petticoat that she wore on her wedding day so i had a petticoat to give it even more fullness and i would recommend if you're making a dress buying a petticoat is a great idea because no one's gonna see it you do not need to feel pressure to make it yourself um, and it's just lovely to give it that extra volume particularly when you're dancing and walking around and it stops it from getting like st stuck between your legs you know because obviously it's a lot of fabric in this dress um, and she also very kindly lent me her veil which was just stunning it was a full-length cathedral veil in lace and I, i'll put some pictures in here so you can see but oh it was just the mo it is just the most beautiful veil and i felt like such a princess and it was really nice because that could be my something borrowed so i borrowed my veil my dress was my something new so i had my something old was a brooch um which belonged to my grandmother and it was also blue so that was quite good so i had something old and blue was my brooch um which was my grandmother's and i had that on my bouquet and then, um, so my something new was my dress and my shoes were new as well, actually. 
and then something borrowed was my veil. So we ticked all the boxes there, which is really, really nice. And actually something else old that I wore was my other grandmother's, so my on my mum's side, my grandmother's crystal necklace, which was actually broken into lots of pieces and I restored it in the run up to the wedding, which was a really lovely thing to do actually. I used to be quite into jewelry making years before I you know, got really into my sewing. And it was really nice. I went to the bead shop in London and I um, found sort of matching beads to fill in the gaps. And it was really nice to have that as well. Somebody else who helped us was my mum and she helped me to hem the whole dress, which was so kind of her, because I knew, of course, I wanted it all to be hemmed by hand. So I hemmed the lining by hand and mum hemmed the sort of exterior fabric by hand. And it was so nice. We spent the day together watching films and hand sewing my wedding dress. So that was really wonderful. I did quite a lot of hand sewing, of course, on the dress and um, finishing it all inside by hand and, you know, anything that could be done by hand, I, I did tend to because I think it just gives a really, really nice finish. But yeah, so we had so many wonderful people help. I think the, the main thing which I will take away from the process of making my wedding dress, and I hope this is something that is helpful to someone out there, is to, to know that your wedding day is gonna be amazing no matter what you're wearing. And it, although the dress is so special and so important, and I'm so glad I did it, I wish I could do it all again knowing that I would love it. And I think realizing that there is no such thing as a perfect dress. And to just turn off, say yes to the dress because that show is completely addictive and they sell you a lie <laughs> that somewhere out there is this perfect dress, just one perfect dress, just that dress waiting for you. And I really don't think that's true. I think that there are a whole world of beautiful dresses out there, which would be perfect for a whole world of different women. And I think to put that much pressure on yourself, when, particularly when you're making something from scratch, which of course we all know isn't easy and takes so much love and time and sort of emotional energy, I think to put the pressure on yourself for it to be perfect is just completely unmanageable. And I did have to take a step back at one point when I was re-hand sewing something for like the third time. And I was like, what the hell am I doing? <laughs> like, why am I doing this to myself? And I decided it was finished. I was like, that dress is done now. And it was two weeks before the wedding. I just zipped up the bag, hung it up, and was like, great, I'll look at it again on the wedding morning. Because you come to that point where you're just tweaking and tweaking and tweaking and tweaking. And the reality is, it, it is what it is at that point. You can, there, there, there is no such thing as perfection. Perfection does not exist. And your dress will be perfect for you. If you have put the love and the time and the effort into your dress, it will be perfect for you. And actually, I did not give my dress a second thought my entire wedding day. I was way too busy just having the best day of my life, dancing and talking and just having so much fun with all my favorite people. And that's kind of what it's all about. And I just had to kind of give myself that wake up call, you know, in the process of making my dress and be like, you know what, this is not the only important thing because <laughs> it's so easy to get really wrapped up in it. And it is such an all encompassing project and it's such a huge project to undertake. Um, so I think that's probably my number one takeaway. Aside from, I think my other top tips would be to try on loads of dresses, get all the inspiration you can. Um, from, from trying on real clothes as well as looking at pictures. And then to, yeah, just give yourself a break. Remember, it will never, it will always be perfect for you, but there is no such thing as perfection. So don't, you know, drive yourself crazy just trying to constantly tweak and tweak and tweak because on the day you will be so happy and everyone will be so happy for you that you'll just have an awesome day regardless. So I think that's probably my main takeaway. Um, so I hope you liked seeing the pictures of the wedding dress. I hope that you got some top tips if you're thinking of doing the same project. If you are thinking of making a wedding dress, please do leave a comment down below. I would love, love, love to have a chat with you about it. Um, and if you have any questions, hopefully I can answer them. And if not, I might be able to direct you to a blog post that I've read because I've read lots of blog posts about this. Um, yeah, so that's it. That's everything for today, guys. I hope you have a really wonderful week. I'll see you again very soon. Bye.